Hey there everyone, Hatesh here, back again with another video and welcome to the Python Crash Course. Before we get started in this video, I would like to ask you a question. How is weather at your side? Here in my city, Jaipur, it's getting really, really cold and city is getting absolutely beautiful. Moving on to the crash course of Python, I have taken a special challenge in this video. I am pretty sure that you are a big fan of Python, that's why you are watching this crash course. But I have taken a special care that people who might be watching this video might be very first time learners in Python or might be the group of people who have watched either couple of videos in Python or have taken some other crash courses as well. So I've taken a special care of that and in this video there is there is something for everybody here. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna first nail down absolutely quickly and in a fun way the basics of Python and after that we're gonna create an application which involves some basic database stuff so that you can build an application. And by the end of the video, I'm gonna, I'm gonna give you an assignment and completing that assignment is also kind of compulsory. So don't forget that. Since this crash course is a bit fun, we are going to just escape onto the very basic and absolute stuff. Uh, definitely, I do cover such kind of thing in my detailed courses on Python or any other language, which you can find at learncodeonline.in. But regardless of that, we are going to work on Python 3. Is that even a question in 2020? Of course, we're going to work on Python 3. Now, for your choice of editor, just feel free to pick up anything. I'm going to choose VS Code for that. So I'm not going to be giving you this specific instruction that, hey, please go to python.org and download version 3 and install it. I know you can do that. That's a pretty easy stuff. So we're going to move directly on talking about some of the meat part in the Python that is going to be helpful in building that project. Quick reminder again, this is a crash course. So we are not going to be talking in detail about everything, but enough that you can get comfortable in Python and can build with this project along with me. Sit back, chill out, relax, and let's talk about the basics of Python. So every programming language that you're gonna see, of course, require a little bit of fundamentals or setup. Python really doesn't. You just install it and that's pretty much it. You can run it almost everywhere. The installers of Python are so great that you don't need to set much of the path unlike Java and other programming language. Just install it and run it. Let's have a quick talk on variables. Don't worry, I will take you to the code editor as well, but this fun theoretical class is also necessary. Don't worry, theoretical is gonna get over very soon. So let's talk about variables. So how do you define a variable in Python? Simply saying score, balance is verified. These all are variables here. Now what do you put inside the variable? Totally up to you. Put a string, put a number, call it integer, or just put a boolean value. True or false, same goes up to you. Python really is a smart language which automatically understand what kind of variable is gonna come up and it's gonna decide automatically for you. So whether you store a string or integer, Python will automatically calculate what kind of variable should I define under the hood. You don't need to worry about it. Now surely there is a lot of detail about variables that we can talk, but that's for some another day. Moving on to another critical aspect which we are gonna use in this project that we are gonna build is arrays. So how does Python arrays look like? Just like a regular simple array and pick out all these parts like string, integer, boolean, just remove all of that part and just declare your variable. For example, if you have an array of my favorite, iced tea, you can define it and let's just put some values in it. Probably I'm a big fan of lemon iced tea and then it can be peach and then it can be mint as well. So these all three are flavors in the iced tea array. Moving on, another crucial aspect of building any project is loop. Surely loop is also a very detailed subject, but right now let's just say if I have to loop through over the Python, this is the syntax, how am I gonna loop through? Now it looks pretty okay, but there is a hidden devil in the Python and of course it first time shows up when you write a simple loop. Python really doesn't care about semicolons. All it cares is about indentation. Indentation is like the devil inside the Python. One indentation here and there and the entire program is gonna get so much of the error. Now luckily for us, almost all the editors which you're gonna see in Python helps you to have figure out these obvious error pretty nicely. Whether you're using PyCharm or VS Code or any other, these errors can be just uh, signifies or we can just get rid of them pretty easily through the editors on the go. 
I hope you are taking the notes of what I'm saying here because we are about to implement all of this. Now one last thing before we move on to the code editor, I would like to mention that Python is so much powerful and so much popular because of its library. You can just simply say import this, import that and things actually work so nicely. All the data science libraries, all the database libraries, they are just single one command away from us in Python. If it is not there, we can install it through pip. But again, that's for a detailed course somewhere. Right now, we're going to only work with the libraries and modules which are installed in our system. We can quickly do a checking of that by opening up the console and saying import this and import that. Don't worry, I'll share that with you. Now coming on to the project that we are going to build, which is going to be super fun in this crash course. Let's go ahead and talk about that a little bit. So here's the problem statement that we are going to resolve by creating a very simple Python application. I make a lot of courses and videos. So let's just say I am in the dilemma of making some courses. I come up with an idea that this is going to be the course name. This is going to be the basics of course and this is going to be the pricing and whether this course is going to be private or public. So I have this problem statement and I want to create a simple application for myself where I can store all of these information. Now this is a little bit more advanced than a simple to do because I just don't want to store the simple things like uh, buy some milk or get some cheese although that's also a great idea. So how we can actually signify this? The statement number one is, since I want to keep everything persistent, I need to use some kind of database. So we're gonna use that as well. In the database, we can just work out with the regular queries like select star from database and stuff, and we will be able to handle that pretty nice and easily in Python. So that's problem number one. The second problem that we are having is we need to have some kind of model. Now, in this case, we don't need to go like crazy, go in depth, but really we need some kind of values in our table that we need to address. For example, a simple course name, a description, a price, and whether the course is gonna be private or not. The specific reason for using that is because I want to show you that how you can have a variable which can store just true or false or zeros and one values. Additionally, once all the functionality is being defined that how we're going to store the values in the database, we're also going to provide a command line utility in our application. Simply saying, just press one so that you can enter the values. And of course, while entering the value, you have to provide course name, description, price, as well as the course is private or not, something like that. We can provide an option, just let's just say by pressing two, we're going to see a list of entire entries which are there in the database. And we can press three to delete a particular specific entry on the course. So that's going to be pretty basics of it. Now this application that we're going to build in Python is going to give you a great idea about object oriented working of Python as well, because we're going to be using classes in that. Now surely this is a very, very small project. So that's why we are not going to be just putting the chunks into different file. We'll be working in one single file. Again, I have got this very detailed explanation of this in my other courses, but that's a talk for another day. Now that's all the theory that you need to know and the basics that you need to know. Now we're gonna jump onto my computer and we're gonna check out some of the basics just one more time very quickly and then we're gonna create this very amazing project and don't forget the assignment that is very very essential if you're watching this crash course. Please do that. Welcome to my computer. In this section, again, the segment of the same crash course, we're gonna first go through with the basics just one more time. Trust me, this one is interesting one. And then once we have got enough of the basics, then finally we are gonna fire up our code editor and we'll create this application. And by the end, I'm gonna give you an assignment that you have to complete, you have to. So let me first fire up the terminal. So I'm gonna just simply open up my terminal. You can open up your command prompt if you are on a Windows. And first and foremost, Windows users. I hope you have already installed Python. I don't think so there should be any problem in that because you just have to visit python.org, download a version 3. Point whatever, and just install it. Next, next, I agree, okay, kind of a stuff. Same goes for Mac users and same goes for Linux user. If you're in the Windows, you only have to say Python, open up your command prompt, git bash, whatever you're using, and just write Python and hit enter. For the users on Mac and Linux, Actually, to be honest, Python actually comes as a default install in Linux and Mac. That's why, but that Python is not usable at this, in this video. So we have to say Python 3 and then enter. Windows users, you are just lucky you just have to say Python. Now, as long as you see these three arrow pointing to somewhere, then that means we can write Python code. And don't worry, I'm not gonna say you that, hey, five plus six is actually 11. That is actually way too boring. I'm not gonna do that. 
And of course, that is something for a detailed course. So how to define a variable? Just write the name of it, pretty simple. And we can store, let's just say six into a score, and then you can find it out by simply saying score, and there you go. Now surely you can have a balance, uh, something like that, if I can write it, balance, and you can have it something like uh, not, not enough, so that's pretty rude, but that's the balance right now. And we can hit enter and Python accepts that too. That means simply I can say that what is my balance and it's gonna reply a not enough. Now, Python actually really is pretty forgiving if you don't mention what kind of variable type is. In fact, nobody mentions that. And it automatically predicts that if it is a number, decimal number, string, or maybe you can have something like is uh, verified. Uh, I tend to use, whenever I have to store a Boolean values, true and false, zero and one kind of a stuff, I tend to just try to ask a question in that, like is verified, is logged in, is not logged in, is success, is not success. You got the point. And we can store anything in that, make sure the first letter is capital in the Boolean, like true and false, the T and F, and hit enter. And then I can simply say, uh, is verified, is it true or false? It gives, gives me that value back. No big deal you got the variable covered, nothing big deal in that. We can also define something like iced tea, which is gonna be my array. Rather accurate term would be iced teas, but I don't know if it is uh, even accurate or not, but let's just forgive for that. And we can have an array by square brackets. It's very important that you know. The circular one, these one are known as parentheses. These are brackets or square bracket, and these ones are braces. Very important that you know these terminologies in the computer world. So with the brackets, you can have an array. You can have something like two, three, four. This is also valid. But since this is iced tea, I'm gonna put my favorite flavors here. Uh, not in particular order, but I'm a big fan of uh, lemon. So I'm gonna get a lemon here, separated by comma, uh, not so favorite, but still sometime it works, is a peach. And finally, we are gonna have a minty iced tea or mint. There we go. We got a simple variable, which we called as iced teas, somewhat reason, and hit enter. There we go, you know how to store variables now in an array. Array is a continuous sequence of storage that is allotted to you. We're not gonna go that much of detail here as well. Now how I can loop through into an array that is also a very essential skill if you're watching any crash course. So here we can use a for loop. Surely there are many other ways, but for loop is one of the best way of iterating through any array. So I can simply say for t, this is a variable t. You can call it t, you can call it as Superman, you can call it as Spider-Man. I'm gonna call this as t, that's just fine. And then you write in, which is again a keyword, and the name of array. In this case, uh, iced tea is the name of my array, iced teas rather. Put a colon sign, hit enter. Then you hit a tab. Very, very important thing in Python, indentation is absolutely crucial here. You're gonna see more clear detail about indentation when we move on to code editor. Just bear with me for a second. And I can just simply go ahead and print this variable, which is t. In Python, this kind of for loop syntax automatically goes through with the start of array till the end of array and loop through automatically stuff for you. So no need for for i equals and then i range. This is like a better way approach. And once I hit enter two times, we see all the values up here. Pretty good. Now we're gonna do one more thing up here, just last. We're gonna define a function as well, which is gonna be important. So we're gonna simply say def, this is how you define a function with a keyword def. And simply after that, you simply say make t. Yeah, I'm a kind of a fan of t. So we put a pair of parentheses here, put a colon sign, hit enter. Make sure you put the tab here as well. Indentation is important. And then we can simply have a print. And then inside the codes, I'm gonna say I can make iced tea. Uh, something like that, whatever you want to print out. Hit enter and hit enter. Nothing will appear here because unless and until you call a method, nothing works. So now I can simply have a call of make iced tea, call that enter and it works. So whatever the code I'm writing inside it, it's gonna just work. So there we go, you got the basics, not like all of that, but you got the basics of Python now right. So I can just go ahead and write quit and there we go. So we are just out of this. Hit control L or not, it's totally up to you. I'm gonna go on to my desktop from the command line itself and I'm gonna create a directory and I'm gonna call this as YouTube uh, Pi Crash. Pretty, pretty long name. But yeah, we are gonna go with that. Once we are inside that, we are gonna fire up our code editor. In my case, the code editor is VS Code. I like that, so 
it looks like it's not opening up properly. I need to grab it. There we go. It didn't open up on that folder that I wanted to be. So I need to find my folder. There we go. YouTube crash. Yeah, now it's better. So let's use the entire screen up here. And I'm not going to use the inbuilt go, uh, terminal of this one because this one is actually easier for to read and study. But you can use that inbuilt as well. For me, for the recording purpose, this one is actually much more easier to see what I'm writing on the terminal from a mobile phone as well. So I'm going to use this one. Okay. Now here we are going to just create one simple file. Again, it is always a great idea to modularize your code or even divide your code into multiple files. I have taken care of good care of that in my detailed course, but right now it's totally fine to have everything in just one file. So we're going to simply call this one as, uh, we're going to put a keyword here, Python, and then we're going to say uh, course, course helper, because it helps me to build course. So I notice here by the end, I'm going to say dot .py. In the Python, the good convention is to use underscore between the names, unlike the camel casing and something. But again, there is no hard and fast rule. Everybody has their own rule, so nothing to be worried. Okay, now one more thing I forgot to tell you, which is the power of Python, which we have discussed just a moment ago, is into the import statement. So let me show you back again on the terminal. If I just fire up my Python 3 shell again here, the reason why Python is getting so much popularity is because of its modules, which you can bring up from any third party, can install it and add tons of functionality. Just remember, like I have created a function make t. There are hundreds of such function designed by amazing programmers and you can take advantage and you can use them. For example, if I want to do something related to OS, like creating files, deleting files, reading files, I have to actually work on OS. So I can just simply say import OS and hit enter, no error means this module is already installed on my system and I can work on it. So creating files and everything is so easy directly because of these third party modules. Since I want to use a database, I want to work with a very specific database, which is SQLite. Luckily, SQLite also ships in as a default in Python. So I'm gonna simply say import, and then you can just mention that database name. In this case, it's gonna be SQLite. Now, SQLite is having a specific version that we want to use, which is SQLite 3. When I hit enter, no error means we can go for it. Now, sometimes typing SQLite 3 can be like a little bit tricky and you really don't want that. So you can just go for as, which gives you an alias or alias, however you say that, and you can just uh, short it. Like I'm gonna simply say SQLite as light. Now, whenever I need to refer this, I can just simply say light. There we go, you got the basics cover. Now let's go ahead and create a program for that. So of course, we are gonna first and foremost, we are gonna import this SQLite. So we're gonna simply say, if I can write that correct, import SQLite 3, 3 as light. There we go. So this is all done. Again, remember, no semicolons. Python really don't like you to put any semicolons. There we go. So what we're going to do, how is the plan of action? First and foremost, uh, we're going to put up some functionality parts. So function, uh, functionality goes here and we're going to comment that. You do the comment by hash. And then again, we are going to have another segment or another part of this file, which is uh, something like provide interface to user. So how user is going to interact with your program, like with the help of numbers, one, two, or three, or maybe you want to design some graphics that's like a little bit later. So a good practice is to put a to-do there uh, that we are going to do this later one. And this is the something functionality we are going to go for here. Okay, let's go for here first and foremost. So we're going to take advantage of little bit object-oriented programming here. So for the object-oriented programming, we're going to use a class here. I hope you don't mind being a little bit informal in the crash courses. So we're going to define a class. This is how you define a class, just a keyword class. Now, the usual convention is that you put up a first capital letter in the classes. So we're going to simply say uh, kind of database uh, manage. So this class is going to be responsible for managing the database. We're also going to put an object here because that's how you create a class. Okay, class has two things that you have to make sure that you are aware of it. 
First and foremost is the constructor and second part is functionality. It has definitely more, but as of now, these are two important ones. A constructor is something which is as soon as you create an object of this class that get calls up. And there's a special syntax how we define it in the Python. And in the functionality part, we have to define some methods which can do functionality with the database, like reading the database or adding an entry in the database or creating the tables in the database. So that's pretty much okay. So how do we define a constructor? We simply use the keyword define and then simply simply underscore underscore. Remember, this is not one underscore. These are two underscore looks like one. And we simply say in it. And this is the syntax. So my code editor is helping me a lot in doing so. We actually don't need this second line up here. We just need the first line here. But have you noticed this indentation part here? Since I've defined this classes and import these are on same indentation. Once I'm inside the class, I'm using an indentation. Some people like four space of indent. Some people like two. I personally like two, but there we go. Once I'm inside it, I want to write a functionality of this. I'm gonna go ahead, hit enter and automatically it indents there. If I want to get out of it, there's no curly braces here. We just get an indentation back there. So pretty nice and easy stuff. Okay, so what we want to do here is we want to use a keyword global. Now, as I told you, variable. Now, a variable which is defined inside a function can only be accessed by the values or things which are inside the function. Same goes for class. A value defined inside the class can only be used just inside the class. Since I'm defining, I'm using a keyword global means the variable which I'm about to define should be used multiple times by other variables as well. It's a pretty common practice of having a global variable. So we're gonna have a global and we're gonna call this as simply con. A short, shortcut for connection, database connection. Some people call it as dbcon for database connection. However you like, it's a just a variable name. You can call it as Batman too. So there we go. Uh, we got a variable again, no semicolons. Make sure you notice that. We hit enter one more time. We're still inside this init. And only way to figure out that you are still writing a part of code of this init or this constructor is just the indentation. Once you hit the backspace there, that means you are no longer inside that. Pretty easy. Now, since one more thing, the database connection is not something which you can just be 100% sure that you're gonna get a connection all the time or probably in time. That's why whenever the code is pretty prone to throwing some error, I'm pretty sure you have heard about this in other languages too, is try catch how you're gonna handle the error. So such code which is very prone or may have some error, then it's a good idea to wrap that inside a try and catch. So an attempt to get connected with the database we are going to throw that inside the try and catch block. So let's say we are gonna go ahead, try and catch. Again, my code editor is helping me out a lot here. So we can see that we have a try, we put a colon after that. In fact, I should write that actually. It's not a good idea to use that functionality here. So we're gonna put up a try, we are gonna put a colon, then we're gonna hit enter. For a moment, I'm gonna just write a pass here because uh, I'm gonna come back and write some code here. We're gonna hit enter and now notice the indentation, super important. And we're gonna use a keyword that is accept. There we go, accept. And whatever the error is gonna come is gonna handle in the exception part. And try means just try to do something, that's simply. And we are going to use exception here. So there we go, exception. Surely you can name out some exception and handle them pretty nicely. Right now, we're not much worried on that. We just want to handle the exception and we're going to print a simple message for the user uh, that may provide some decent uh, notice to the user, something like uh, unable, unable to create a DB or exclamation, of course, why not? So what we're gonna do in this, as soon as an object is being created, we're gonna try to create a database file if that doesn't really already exist. And we're gonna just create and populate it with some fields so that we can enter some data in it. So I'm gonna remove this pass for a minute. Okay, and now we're gonna try to make a connection. Remember we have created a variable con just a minute ago. We're gonna use that and we're gonna simply say, hey, I have brought in a database which is SQLite. I'm referring that as a light and light has a lot of features. One of the feature is connecting with database with a method dot connect. There we go, we have got connected. And inside that you have to uh, 
create or give it a database file name. I'm gonna call this as simply uh, courses.db. Okay, now interestingly, where this db file is gonna be created, since I haven't mentioned any path, it's gonna be created in the same directory where this file is, so pretty nice. But we don't have any file named as course db, so how are we gonna verify that? Now we are gonna write an SQL statement, which is gonna verify that if this file doesn't exist, just create one for, the, for us with the following field. So for that, we have to use another syntax, which is gonna be with con for using the same variable again. And this is a little bit gibberish code, but I'm gonna surely explain you that in a second. So first and foremost, once you have a connection, we're gonna create another variable, which is cur. Cur is a common thing in the cursor, uh, which helps you to get connectivity data with the database. How do you get that? Uh, we again get that with a con, and we are gonna simply say cursor. Once you have the access of cursor, now this cursor can actually talk with the database. So that's why we have stored its reference inside this cur variable, pretty nice. And we're gonna simply say cur dot, and there is an execute. And this much of the alien code that you're seeing right now here, that's pretty much it. That's all you need to take care uh, to execute any SQL command. And we're gonna do exactly same this piece of code like with cur and all of this again and again to interact with the database. So make sure you absorb that nice and easily. For the first time viewers, I know this can be a little bit too much, bit overwhelming too, but nothing to be worried. So inside this, we want to execute some statement and these statements are gonna be wrapped inside a double quote, kind of a string. So we're gonna simply say, create table. And again, there is no need of writing that in the, in the upper cases, like yelling. Uh, but again, this is a convention we follow all the time. So we're gonna simply say, it's almost, SQL is almost like English, so you just say it. Create table if not exists exist and what kind of table you want to create if it doesn't exist. I'm gonna create a table with the name of course and you put a pair of parentheses after that. Now once you put this, it's gonna create a table uh, course for you. But what kind of field you want inside that course table? Remember, database looks like an Excel sheet. You have some rows, you have some fields where you enter some values and stuff like that. So first and foremost, the field that I want to create is gonna be ID what kind of properties or what kind of field should be this ID? Because database is not really forgiving like Python, like it's gonna automatically figure out things for you, like you can put variables and integer. So the ID is gonna be the primary key in our database. So we're gonna mention that, and this is gonna be an integer. So this is gonna be integer and space, and we are gonna have a primary, and this is gonna be primary key, of course, with an auto increment. So we're gonna simply say auto increment. I'm a big typo guy, I might have made it already, but I'll figure it out on the go. And then one of the field I'm interested in is name. Uh, what kind of value you're gonna put in the name? I'm gonna put up the text value. Okay, what else do you need? I'm gonna put up a description as well. What kind of value you're gonna put up in description field? I'm gonna say text again, not yeah, uh, text, there we go. Text, finally. And what else do you need? I'm gonna need a price as well. What kind of value is price is? Probably integer, that's fine too. I'm gonna keep this one as string as well, or rather correct, text as well. Then I'm gonna use a variable, uh, which is gonna be is underscore private, private. What kind of value is it going to have? This is gonna have a Boolean value. But again, uh, this should not be null, means uh, there should be some value inside it. Again, database properties. And we're also going to mention default in it. So we're gonna simply say default of one. Again, totally up to you, what kind of Boolean values you want to put as a default, like zero or one, totally up to you, nothing wrong in that. Okay, there we go. So this is my entire really, really long thing. But again, the good thing is, this piece of code is only going to run for the very first time when you're gonna run the script, and rest of the time when you're gonna run your script, there is already gonna be a file named as courses.db, which is gonna keep storing your database. And the good thing is, you can just move both of these files wherever you like and still are gonna hold all of your data values here. Okay, so the big thing is all done. This is a really, really big thing. I need to take a sip of water. Hmm. Now comes up the functionality part. So file is created. 
what you want to do inside the database. We want to create some entries, okay? We want to read some entries and we want to delete some entries as well. So let's go ahead and create a methods for that. Method is like a wrap up for a chunk of code. I, I don't know if anybody can define it better, but it's just a wrap up for a chunk of code. So we're gonna simply define, a, let's just call this as insert underscore data or insert courses, something like that. And again, whenever we are going to call such methods in the class, we use a keyword self. And while calling this method, it's not like we're gonna call this method like empty. We have to provide some data to be entered in the database. We're gonna call this right now as data. Uh, we're gonna assume that this data is gonna hold up all the values and we're gonna like uh, pull out these values in a minute. So don't worry on that. Okay, we're gonna put up this and we're gonna simply say pass for a moment. Pass simply means I'm gonna come back and probably will some put data here. Right now, just hold it on for me. So this is the first thing. Okay, what kind of all next thing that you want to do? I want to just fetch the data as well. So there we go. Again, for fetching the data, I don't need to put any data. I just need to put the compulsory keyword for Python self. Again, nothing much on self as of now, probably in the detailed course. And as you know, I'm gonna put a pass here as well. And what else, what else kind of a thing you really want to do with this one? Probably delete some data. So I'm gonna hit enter one more time and I'm gonna simply say, delete underscore data. But again, I cannot just delete and go ahead and say, hey, delete that one. I need to provide something very specific, something very unique to delete that entry. Remember, we have got this ID here, and this ID is a primary key and auto increment, kind of saying this is gonna be a unique value. So I can actually provide that in here. And there we go. I'm gonna write a pass here for a moment. So there we go. These are the three functionality on which I have to work. Again, everything is going on at the back end, kind of in the thin air, nothing is concrete and user cannot interact with that. The providing, the part of providing an interface to your user is gonna come up in this to-do. That's why this is how you have done. In case if I would have been creating this as a professional course, I would have definitely given it as a, a to-do up here. So probably something like a to-do here, uh, create, data, not data, create data. And these kinds of to-do would be all up here uh, because that's how I like to define in advance the stuff that I'm working on. Uh, something like that. No, please don't use that. And something like that up here. And indentation, there we go. So create data and then read data and probably delete data. This is like more better approach of defining what you're about to do because nobody just writes the code out of thin air. There is a proper syntax structure and planning how you really want to do that. So that's what we are gonna do. Okay, moving on, apart from side talks, let's go ahead and work on this insert data. So how are we gonna insert data? Again, we are gonna wrap this code. It's a good idea in general that whenever you are talking with the database, wrap your code inside try and catch block. If you don't, that's also fine too in some cases, but then there's gonna be nasty errors. So go with the recommendation. Okay, and again, we are gonna just kind of a copy the exception almost exactly same, and there we go, and we are gonna just paste it up here. And again, instead of this exception, we are gonna just return some values or print up some different message. Uh, right now, I just really won't, don't want to do anything. I just want to return a value, true or false, however you like to go. Uh, true, or you can return a value that, hey, I was not able to insert the data properly, just like we have done above. Right now, we're gonna just go ahead, in fact, actually, it's not a good idea to return true, actually, a false is better, that we have got a false, and then you can do something on it. Moving on, in the try part, what you really want to do, and how we enter the data in this SQLite 3 database. Again, we go with the same structure, and you might be noticing, yeah, it is exactly same. We define the cur for cursor. How do we get a cursor? By the con. Con dot cursor, and there we go. Now this cursor variable can talk to that, so simply cur dot execute. Come on, come on, execute, there we go. And inside the execute, double quotes and write your SQL. Yes, literally, this is gonna be exact same thing we'll be doing in other two as well. So there's a syntax up here. Okay, so how do we go with that? Uh, first and foremost, I'm gonna hit uh, kind of enter just right here. Uh, again, you can actually do that. It's much more easy and easily visible. 
If you don't do it, you want to do it like a bow syntax, that's also fine too, nothing. Python is very cautious about spaces and indentation, but in some cases, you can take advantage of that as well. So we're gonna simply say insert uh, into, insert into, and then simply the course. Again, uh, there is a difference here. The table that you are creating is named as course. The database that you are creating is named as courses. You insert the value into course, the table name. So that's why I have called it as course. And then you put a pair of parentheses where all the values are gonna come up, like not the values actually, this first pair of parentheses is for the fields in which I'm gonna enter the value. What are the values? So we're gonna simply say values and then we're gonna go ahead like this. Again, a little bit weird syntax. And what kind of, first and foremost, let's figure out what are the field up here. So we're gonna figure out the field. The name is gonna come up. The description, description is gonna come up. The price is gonna come up and there's another value which is is underscore private. That's gonna come up. So four values will come up. We're not gonna provide ID because that's already auto increment. Auto increment means it's gonna start and it's gonna just keep on increasing. Database do that for us. Remember here, the four values are here. So inside the values, you put one question mark, two question mark, three and four. There we go, nice and easy. Once you are outside of this double quotes, you put a comma and then you put a data. So we are gonna pass on a data in a similar, in a special format. I'll talk about that in a minute, I promise. And then we are going to automatically pull the values from it and we're going to insert in these places. This is a syntax that is being given to us by this SQLite module which, has imp which we have imported. And again, I noticed a typo. There we go, into. I told you, I do the typos and probably after this entire thing which we have done, I will spend probably five or 10 minutes in figuring out where I've done all these typos. Debugging is also a part of writing code. So there we go, now I'm gonna save that and there we go. Now surely if this is confusing you a little bit, you can move that on the same line, no worries in at all, no problem at all. Okay, this is all done. We have taken advantage of this data, we have filled it up. Now moving further, so how we're going to fetch the data? For fetching the data as well, we're gonna do again a try catch, you know that. I'm pretty sure you can actually go a little bit beyond me as well as of now, a little bit fast forward. We're gonna go for the same exception, copy and paste that, save some time, and looks pretty good. So how we are going to fetch the data? Fetching the data is the most easiest thing in any kind of database you can do. So let's go ahead and try that. So we're gonna try with a connection. Okay, the connection is gonna be same, you got the point, we're gonna have a con dot cursor, and there we go, now this cur can actually talk and can execute some SQL statement. So we're gonna simply say cur dot execute. Where is execute, there we go. <laughs> and here also you can take advantage of it, but since the statement is so small, I don't need to hit enter. Surely I can do it, but the select statement is pretty easy, select star from, Courses, courses should be small. Okay, there we go, that's it. You have got all the values up here. But the problem here is we have actually taken up all the values, but we haven't actually thrown them somewhere from this function so that somebody can use it. So we are going to return this, uh, whatever uh, this execute statement has given to us. How do we do that? We simply use the keyword return instead of returning false and all of these, we can use this cur object that has executed a statement. Once this cur object actually execute any statement, it keeps a hold of it. So how we can release it? We can use a method given to us that says uh, fetch, if I can write it, there we go, fetch all, and there we go. Now surely uh, there are a couple of versions and variants of this fetching and how you want to throw up the data. Right now, our job can be done easily by this fetch all. So we are returning this object here, which is cur.fetch all. Pretty nice, pretty cool. Okay, the last part in which we have got again the delete. So how are we gonna delete? Again, be very cautious. There is nothing wrong in doing an extra layer of check while deleting the data because that's a crucial operation. And we're gonna do a try catch again. You got the point, we are gonna copy this one here and we're gonna throw up an exception which is gonna be exactly same. 
Surely we can have a better exceptions, but again, hey, this is just a crash course. Again, uh, we can actually copy this bit of code again, and we can actually, instead of the try, we can paste that. You already got this one. So now we have got a cursor object and all we have to do is execute a query up here. So how we're gonna do that? So first and foremost, uh, notice here that we are just writing this SQL statement directly up here. But in case, uh, let's just say I'm not really comfortable in writing the SQL statement on the go. What we can do is we can create a variable, something like this here, SQL and then a string. And then I can just literally uh, copy this or even cut that and paste it up here. And now instead of here, I can actually get a variable called SQL. There we go. No big deal in that. It's gonna run exactly the same. But I'm gonna hit a command Z a couple of times because I am really looking for this one. But here in the deleting statement, uh, since this ID is gonna come up like on the go, it's a better idea if we craft our SQL statement into a variable. Again, no need if you don't want to, just for variety, we're gonna have it. So the SQL statement that we are gonna have is gonna simply say delete from course where, where clause is important while deleting, otherwise you're gonna delete everything, uh, where ID is gonna be equal to question mark. Yes, you got it right. Whenever there's a question mark, that can be automatically being filled up by the variable that we can pass. But there is also a special syntax of that. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's call this cur, and cur is gonna execute a statement for us. There we go, execute, there we go. And in the execute, first and foremost thing is bring up the variable, which is SQL, and then we're gonna provide this ID. Now, if we're gonna just provide the ID like that, it is not going to work. There is a special syntax. How do I know it? That's when you actually read the documentation and bring up the syntax. So we have to wrap this up inside an array, just with one value ID. Make sure this value is exactly is up here. So whatever you're calling it, ID, ID is my ID, that should be same. And that's pretty much it. So within a few minutes, I would say that, we have actually done with the functionality part. So now this class is all ready. Now in a bigger project, I would rather like to keep this class into a separate file and then would like to import it in my file so that functionality is in a different file and the working or the UI that I'm providing to the user is in different file. But since this is a crash course, I have done it elaborately in my other Python courses. Now we're gonna work on this to do, which is provide an interface to the user. So, although it is not really compulsory to have a main method in uh, Python, it is not at all compulsory, but it's a good idea to give a structure to your application, where should be the starting execution point and from where the file should start executing the code and stuff like that. For that, we actually define a method which is main. Uh, it's gonna be exactly same how you have uh, thought about it. So we're gonna have a main, there we go. Now inside the main, uh, we also write a simple code of if main and stuff like that. We are gonna do that. First and foremost, just like any ordinary method, we're gonna define this main and then we're gonna ex uh, kind of call it a bit later. Okay, first and foremost, some of the fancy stuff that I love to do. So we're gonna have a print statement and let me show you that onto the terminal first. So moving up here. So we can have a print statement, we know that. So what happens when I just use inside the string this asterisk? We print asterisk. What happens when this string is actually being multiplied by 20? Asterisk means multiply address as well. And when I put it inside the string, it means asterisk. It can be termed as simply uh, a hash value or uh, a one value or ABC, whatever you like to have. So let's just go for the hash. So what happens when hash is multiplied by 20? you get hashes 20 times. What happens when you multiply it by 40? You get hashes 40 times. So I love to use that for decorating my command line applications and sometimes even some patterns as well. I love that. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna simply use the same thing. We're gonna simply say, I want this star to be printed uh, 40 times. Again, there's nothing related to the code itself. I just like to have this one stuff here. So there we go, and then we're gonna put up a slash n here. Slash n simply means new line. So we're gonna have this one up here. Once that is being done, I want to again have a print statement. And this time also, we're gonna have a colon. We're gonna put a slash n up here as well. Slash n, colon, colon. And then we're gonna simply say course, manage, 
meant. Again, this is fancy stuff. You don't need to do it if you don't want to. And But I love to have it. Slash in. And I'm going to copy this line and I'm going to paste it after that as well. So that it looks a little bit decorative. Hey, we actually deserve that much. Okay. That's actually fun and fancy stuff. Now, this class is all done. Whenever we create a class, we want to create some object from this class. A class, I know you have heard it probably a million times, but I'm going to say it again. A class is like a blueprint from which you create many other objects. I'm going to also say it. So uh, let's go ahead and do that. We're going to hit the tab. Don't forget the tab. It is very, very crucial. So we're going to create an object. We can call it as DB. Again, call it DB, call it Superman, call it Spider-Man, totally on you. So uh, DB is going to be coming up from a class, which is a database manage. The class name should be exactly same as what you have defined up here. If you've called it as Superman, you have to call it as Superman here as well. Okay, moving further. Right now, user has no idea that how we should interact with the application. So we're going to provide a guide to this uh, user. So for the guide, I'm going to first again uh, go for this. Instead of this star, I'm going to give a hash 40 times just for fun. Okay. And uh, to be honest, it's actually not a good idea to put a slash and just realize that it's going to just mess up the stuff. So rather, I'm going to go with this stuff and then I'm going to hit enter and then I'm going to have a slash in here. That is actually better. Just realize that it could be really a bad situation because it's going to have a slash in every single time. My bad. Just realize that. So uh, we're going to provide a 40 times hash here. And then again, this is all fancy stuff, but I love it. And we're going to simply say user manual. Yeah, I know this is very fancy, but I love that. So and paste that here as well. And now we are going to have a slash in and a slash in here, colon, colon. And then we are going to have a colon, colon. So this looks good. This looks good. Pretty okay. And even we can do a testing on this as of now, but I think we don't need it. That's actually very basic stuff. So now coming on to the user manual of the user. So how we're going to have a user manual. So we're going to simply provide a print statement of how sh you should interact with this application. So if you do press one, that means insert a new uh, course would be fine. New course. And by the way, I'm pressing command shift D to duplicate the line. And if user is going to press two, then we are going to simply say show all courses. Show all courses, command shift D. And if user press three, then we are going to simply say a uh, delete a record or delete a course. Delete a course. Need ID of course, something like that. And in fact, we can actually put a message here, something like press one or something like that. Yeah, that makes sense. And once we have done this user manual printing and stuff like that, uh, then actually, Actually, I can actually put a slash and heap here as well. Uh, not a great idea, but I'm going to still put it. Slash in. This also, slash in simply means a new line. So actually, we need a new line. Otherwise, it will be a little bit messy up here. And there we go. Looks nice. And then finally, we are going to have this one. And after that, we are going to have a slash in. So there we go. So the user manual and the printing of nice and easy messages are all done. Uh, surely could have done a better job here, but again, I love to have a fun this. Okay, now coming up to this main point, which is choice. So what kind of choice user is giving to us? We can take input from the user by just having an input method. The great idea of this input is you can actually run it directly or you can provide a string message to the user that what kind of input you are providing. So we're going to simply say, enter a choice, what you really want to do. We're going to put a colon space. There we go. Looks nice. Now, there are a couple of ways how we can write this application. We can write a simple while true loop, which is going to just keep on taking input from the user. And probably we can add an, another entry while pressing on this. We can just exit from the loop using uh, the loop terminating keywords. You might have heard about them, break, continue, stuff like that. But right now we're going to just go for the basic one and we're going to provide a simple 
if else thing stuff going on. So uh, we're gonna simply say if choice, if I can write that, if choice is gonna be equal to, now here comes the interesting stuff. You might simply say, I'm gonna say if the choice is equal to one. And that would be a mistake. Whenever you are taking an input from the user, in any language, the majority chances are it's gonna come up in the string format. So either convert that into integer or you can just match the value directly like that. So if that is the case, we need to go, again, this is a if, means indentation is gonna kick in again. Uh, by the way, I forgot to put a colon there. That's why so many errors. I told you, IDEs can actually get rid of so many of these errors. There we go. So if this is going on, if choice one, then we need to take input from the user. So again, name, description, price, and stuff like that. So we're gonna simply say enter a name and user is gonna use input for entering the name. We're gonna put a slash in, uh, then slash in, and we're gonna simply say enter course name. I'm gonna actually copy this and there we go. I can actually use a colon there we go, now it's look good. So I'm gonna say copy this one and paste that one more time. And name, description, price, and what else? Private or not, so we need actually four of them. So instead of the name, we are gonna simply say enter description or we can just write this for short in case we want to go for that. But I'm gonna go for the full description. And then we need to go for pricing as well. So we're gonna simply say price, and this one is gonna be private or not. Uh, private. Okay, uh, I think the message should be different up here. Uh, something like, is this course private and we have to provide some kind of mode messages like I can simply say you can put a zero or slash one but since I'm gonna be only one using this application so I can uh, put that yeah zero means private or zero means public however you want to go for that it's totally up to you okay nice and easy so we have got all the values up here now what we want to do is we want to take advantage of functionality we want to insert the data. So we want to use this method so that we can take advantage of this SQL. But one thing is still missing, which is this data. So how we are gonna pass on some multiple information. One good way, whenever you want to pass on multiple such values is array. Surely there are other ways, maps and stuff, which are much more easier and advanced. But this is what we are having right now. So we're gonna simply use an if and else uh, statement. Again, we can use try and catch again, but we are gonna go for if and else statement. So we're gonna simply say if db, again db is a variable which is being created from, is an object which is created from the class and which can access all the methods, something like insert data. So while inserting the data, we are gonna pass on an array and the array is gonna have name, description, if I can write that correct, did I wrote it correct? I guess no, yeah, now it's good. So name, description, price, and private. Okay, so once we are providing this up here, uh, this means we are calling this DB insert just with this one. And now the great thing is, uh, first and foremost, we don't need to pass on this self. This self is actually a keyword. Once we pass on this data, this data is an array, which will be held up here as an array. And each value is gonna be going up here. Remember, the order is also important. So if you're saying name, you have to pass on the name for the very first value in the array. Similarly, description, price, and is private. So the name can be different in our array. Probably you can, instead of saying this one as name, you can call it as course name. You have to say it course name here as well. That's okay. In the database still, they are gonna be called as name. Okay, that's clear up. Okay, so what happens if this goes all good? So if this all goods goes good, that means we are not gonna get any error, means we are gonna get a true. We can print a message to the user, uh, something like uh, course was inserted, inserted uh, successfully. There we go. And in the else case, we can actually copy this and we can uh, 
print that again too much indentation not good there we go and we can say uh, something like oops the worst error in the programming history can be oops uh, something uh, goes something is wrong <laughs> uh, this is really a bad error whenever i see this kind of error from any database or anything i'm like what's the use of this error but again i'm still making this you can actually do a better job than this Okay, moving further, remember we have only gone through with this if choice is one. So we have to go with some another choice. So I'm gonna hit just tab one more one time. And since this is like not the if, this is the second part of it. So I'm gonna write L if. It's kind of a short form for else if. I know that's like not really good, but this is how it goes on in Python. Okay, what about if the user's choice is two? Remember the manual, you have to follow that as well. Show all the courses. So for that, we want to take advantage of this fetch all. Let's go up here. And what we want to do here is pretty easy. Uh, we want to print the course list. So we're gonna simply have a print. Again, fancy stuff. We're gonna simply say colon colon, probably a slash and would be great. Colon colon, and we're gonna simply say course list. Okay, there we go looks great now while printing the stuff what happens is remember what we are getting back from this method that's important thing we are returning this entire thing which is cur.fetchall if you're trying to print this you are going to realize that this is actually sort of array not would be really exactly to call this one as array but yeah we can say that loosely that it's going to be an array that is returned back remember in the very basics we have learned how we can iterate through an array. That's what exactly we will be using, but with a little bit more twist, learning something new here as well. Okay, so moving up here, we're gonna use a simple for syntax. So as we said, something like 40, not team, 40 in uh, ice teas, and we were printing the T. So this is what we were doing. But there is another uh, thing that we can take advantage of here, which is the index as well. So you can simply say the item itself and the item can have an index as well. So index comma T or item itself. The same is gonna be done for the value that which is given to us uh, from this DB fetch all that we have used, okay? So what we're gonna do, instead of calling it as T, we're gonna call this as item, but again, you can call it whatever you like. And where is this item is located? For a moment, just use a pair of parentheses. I'm gonna walk you through more in that. We are returning or we are getting something here, which is, uh, where it is, this fetch all. So this fetch all, we cannot actually access it directly. We have to use it through this uh, fetch data method. Once this is being called, then this will be returned, okay? So let's go ahead and do that. So we're gonna simply say my object db can access a method which is fetch data and this will give us that value. But in order to iterate over through it and have an access of this index as well, we have to use another keyword which is enumerate. Again, uh, I have discussed detailed about the enumeration and stuff in my detailed course. Right now, just remember, it's gonna just iterate through over it. Okay, once we have this, instead of printing the T, we would like to print the values in it. So we're gonna go ahead and do, okay, fancy stuff is always something. So we're gonna put up a slash n, and then we're gonna simply say the serial number, because courses are having unique IDs, and providing the user the serial number is important so that user can actually delete the values as well. So we're gonna simply say, and then we're gonna do a concatenation. Concatenation simply means some string, some data, and we want to just print them on the same line, kind of attaching each other with the variables and string. So right now, this entire thing is a string. And now I want to concatenate it with some values. So we're gonna just print, add it. Now, remember this index is available, so I want to have an index. I can definitely write an index here, but in the array, the problem is index starts from zero and providing a user that, hey, zero is a value is not a really great idea. We programmers do understand the thing with the zero, but not the regular people. So it's always a great idea that you put a plus one here. Since this is getting like really too much plus plus and stuff, it's a great idea to wrap this up inside a pair of parentheses. Now, this might give you a bit of error because right now things are string and all of that stuff. So it's a great idea that you convert this into a string and you just have to write str. 
Once you write an STR, it's almost something like this, STR, and then, not DTR, STR, and in the pair of parentheses, again, I wrote a DTR again. How oh, that is. STR, and whatever the value, even if you write a numerical one here, that will be treated as string one. These are two different things. You might be asking how different they are. Let me tell you that as well, because that's important. One plus one is two, but a string one plus a string one is actually 11. Means they just put them side by side. That's why they are important and you understand the value of how they actually goes on. Okay, so this is all good. We have got an index value up here. Now all I want to do is Command Shift D. We have got a duplicate here. Now what we're gonna do is we are gonna have a course ID, name and stuff like that. So we are going to put them on the separate line up here. So this one is gonna be, I think actually we don't need a separate line in this case. We're gonna simply say uh, course ID. So course ID, although this is almost exactly same, but still uh, ID, which is coming up from the database and the serial number are not gonna be same. They might be same, they might be same, but this is not. So this is just a fancy stuff that we are doing it for ourselves as for index. To provide an actual ID needs to be fetched up from the database itself. And that is pretty easy, like ridiculously easy. All you have to say is item. Item means string, uh, this array is having multiple values. Each value is item. Each item is having all the properties, ID, name, array, and we have to just go through with that. So the first value is gonna be ID. The first, like zeroth value is gonna be ID. The first value is gonna be course name, description. You got the point. So let's go ahead and print all of them. So this is gonna be course name. And this is gonna be at first place, Command Shift D to duplicate that. And then we are gonna simply say course description. And that's gonna be the second item, technically third, but loosely we are saying it third, second. You got the point, you got that. So this is gonna be course price. And that's gonna be item third again. And is it private or not? So we can actually go for that. We can actually do something interesting here with this one. Let me show you that. We can actually remove this print and we can actually hold these values into a private variable. So private is gonna have a value of yes. Uh, if item at fourth, uh, again, yes and no, true and false is holding up there. User is not really friendly uh, with courses private or not with zero and one. So we can actually provide more description value here else we can just store a no value here. So uh, again, we can use a single code, double code really doesn't matter. So the thing is, uh, now we are having a variable private, it's gonna store a default value of yes. And if the item is having like true or one, then it's gonna have a yes. And zero, that means no, or that means else part. So it's gonna automatically hold the value yes. So once this is all done, we can actually copy this and we can go up, print this, and we can say it course is private or is private. And we don't need string and accessing this value. We can actually access our variable now. So we can simply say private. Again, fun stuff. Okay. And then once everything is done, I would like to, not price, I would like to print a simple slash n just to verify that, yeah, this is on a separate line. Okay, uh, this is like too much, uh, but yeah, one more thing is remaining. So what we can do now is we have one more choice being left. So I'm gonna just copy this one here and we'll paste it up here. So else, if the choice is two, then it's great. And else if the choice is three. And you might be wondering, hey, this is the last choice. Why we are still writing else if? Because I want to write a final else saying that if you're entering anything else than these choices, that means it's not really how you're interacting with the program. So that's what we really want to do. Okay. So choice number three, in case you remember, I need to save that. In case you remember the choice number three, where is that? Where is that? Choice number three is delete a course, but you need a course ID to be provided. So user is definitely gonna give us an ID. Remember, the serial number and IDs are different. The serial number is just for fun, although in this case, they are gonna be same, but the course ID is something that user should provide us. In fact, it would not be really wrong if you just remove this serial number to avoid some confusion. 
again, how you craft your application, totally on you, your application. I'm nobody here. <laughs> so we want to get a record ID and that we can actually get from the user by input and saying that, hey, uh, enter the course ID, colon, there we go. Okay, now we have got this record ID. All we have to do is call a method which is delete data and we have to provide this ID as well. So if uh, we access this variable db that can access to this delete data and I provide this record ID, then it should be able to do the job pretty nicely. So we're gonna print up a message and we're gonna say course was deleted uh, with a success. Not a great message, not a great message, not even remotely great, uh, but it's okay. And else, uh, we're gonna print up a message with that cranky, really bad message. Oops, something went wrong. That's like a really worst message you can print out. But again, you can be more descriptive, you can be really nice, and I'm not gonna be nice, I'm not gonna be. And I'm gonna simply say else, in the all the else cases means all the all values that user is trying to enter, we simply are gonna simply say print and we're gonna simply say uh, something, I can say something creative, but I'm gonna simply say a uh, bad choice, but definitely in the all uppercase so that it looks like I'm yelling, but I'm not, <laughs> but you got the point. Okay, so there we go. Our program is all good and ready. Now we have seen in the terminal that whenever we need to call this method or any method as a given fact, I can just go ahead and call it as like run the main. That is also one of the way, but not a really, really great way. In case, and that goes specifically just for the main method. If you're naming your method anything else, like probably Hitesh or probably learn code online, then you can run it directly here. But to give our uh, application a flow, a starting point, we actually have a syntax of it. And we simply use this syntax, which is a little bit tricky to understand, but watch it very closely. We write if, then we write underscore, underscore, two underscores are here, common mistake. We write name, then again, underscore, underscore, and then gonna be equal to, two times equal, use single quotes, again, underscore, underscore, main, not in caps, main, again, underscore, underscore then put a colon sign, hit enter, and then call this main method. I know you might be thinking this is the most weird stuff, but sometimes Python actually goes with some kind of weird stuff, but this is how we execute the main method. This only goes for main. For all the other methods, uh, you can just call them directly. And I'm pretty sure, 100% sure that I have made couple of typos, couple of mistake in this code, that's okay. We all make it. Uh, if I would be just directly saying, hey, this runs it for the very first time, then I might be using some of the camera tricks, but I want to just debug this application. So I am expecting the code is not gonna be like perfect. We have to tweak it out a little bit. How we're going to run this code? You can use inbuilt terminal. I am rather gonna use my terminal. Okay, so I'm gonna run this from my uh, terminal because that's actually easier one to go ahead. So I'm gonna go on to this folder which is named as YouTube stuff, so there we go. Now, before you run that, Windows users, please write just Python and the file name, like YouTube, what did I name my file? Python, yeah. Uh, Python Crash Course Helper, just like that. For Mac, and Linux user, you cannot run this, uh, this file just by saying Python, you have to say Python 3. Remember, and we're gonna hit enter, and there we go, voila, it looks pretty good. Uh, there we go. Now notice here one interesting thing. Uh, right now, uh, this, actually I, sh I should have showed you a little bit earlier. Let's go ahead and try that. Let's try to hit four, uh, because that's not a great choice, bad choice, program uh, terminated. This course.db file was not there. I'm gonna move it to bin again, because I want to recreate it. Because I want to show you that when we are actually uh, running this, executing the top line of code, let me show you up here. In this main, as soon as an object is being created from this database class, remember, a constructor actually initializes it or runs as soon as you create an object from it. Since we have created this object at the very top of it, that's why it has executed just right here. If you would have executed it after entering the choice, the file wouldn't have been created just at the very start. 
So notice here, the file is not present, but if I go up here and if I just run this again, the file should be there now. And as you see, the course.db or database file is being created. Now let's have some fun with this. So I'm gonna simply say, I want to insert a new course. I'm gonna enter the choice of one. There we go. I should actually move this a little bit up here so that you can see it better. So enter a course name. Uh, let's go for a Python crash course. Enter a description, uh, a course for YouTube only. Not gonna go on Learn Core Online. We have a detailed course there. And price, uh, I'm gonna put it like $199. Uh, there we go. The reason why I'm able to put a dollar sign here because I'm storing this price as a string. If I would have been storing that as an integer, this dollar, could have actually messed up with my application since I'm not doing any special check that the value that's coming up from the user is actually what kind of value it is. There we go. Is this course private or not? So I'm gonna simply say a one. There we go. It says, oops, something is wrong. That means we got something uh, wrong in our application. So since it is pretty easy to validate this application that I am doing something wrong in here, and especially this, was able to go ahead and get some values here. So we need to figure it out onto this one here. So pretty easy to debug, insert the data. I'm probably pretty sure that I have made uh, some kind of typos here. So let me quickly check that. So we're simply saying execute cursor, insert into course, name a description price is private. And the reason why this is not getting all these things, because actually I forgot to write a piece of code that is return true. So if this line is executed successfully, I definitely want to return true. And I actually uh, think that I should do that in the delete return true. Why is it not getting return true? I want to return it true here. Probably I'm missing some of the syntax. Okay, it looks like indentation. And there we go, should be fixed. Yeah, this is all good. Again, debugging is a part of how you fix up the stuff. So there we go. So if this line executes all good, I can actually return another object that what I have inserted, I can return that value. But I think that should be enough for this one. Okay, looks pretty good. Here we are returning something in the fetch and the delete, uh, we are not doing anything. So we should also do that here as well before it throws us some error. We're gonna simply say return and we're gonna simply say true, true. There we go. So I think it should be fair enough now. And we can actually go ahead and delete this one one more time. Let's test our code. Clean that up and run this file again. What do you really want to do? I want to again insert a course. Again, this is gonna be same Python crash course. A course for YouTube. Okay, price again. Uh, let's reduce the price a little bit. $99 this time, just fun. And is this course private? Nah, one is fine. Course was inserted successfully. I want to do it one more time. I'm gonna run this script. Uh, again, a simple quick assignment could be just, uh, our user interface can be put inside a while true loop and we can actually keep on running it. So that can also be done. And choice is one again. I'm gonna simply say react crash course. I've already created a React Crash course, by the way, in case you haven't checked it out on my YouTube. That's also fun to watch. So let's enter this. A free course for YouTube. Price. Uh, I think you can probably give me $2 for that as a fun. And is this course private? No. So course was inserted successfully. Now I want to check out the list of the course. So I'm going to enter a choice of two. And there we go. So it says, uh, you got a problem in enumerate. Okay, my bad. As I said, I make a couple of typos. Let me show you how I was able to figure that out. Notice here, I was saying here that insert into course. So the table name that I'm creating is course. And here I'm saying select star from courses. I'm pretty sure you have already yelled at me at that time. Hey, you are doing a typo, but it's okay. Uh, sometime. It took me like five minutes to actually figure it out. Uh, but again, things should be good now. Let's go ahead and try that one more time and we can clean this up. Again, debugging is essential. You need to learn that. Show all courses, and there we go. Now we're getting courses. So the serial number, in this case, actually the ID is actually starting one here. So I wouldn't probably showing the serial number here because that can be uh, confusing for the user. 
uh, because the IDs actually are going to be always auto incrementing and the serial number user can actually manipulate with that. But again, let's not go into depth of that. So course ID, all of these are pretty printing nicely. I would love if these hashes would be printed at the end of it, at the start of it. Gives a little segmentation up here. Let's try to delete this uh, course with the ID one, which is Python crash course, because that's already done. So let's go ahead and enter a choice. I want to delete something. I'm hoping again, there might be a bug here, which we need to fix up or typo at least. And ID, uh, probably one course was deleted with a success. Now that's pretty rare that co code execute for the very first time. I don't expect my code to be executed for the very first time. And there we go, we have got serial number. Now, this is exactly what I was saying, that this time the serial number is one, but the course ID is actually two. So that is actually a tricky thing. I would not like to display the user the serial number anymore, because serial number is something which we are generating based on index, and this is coming up from the database. So to delete, this is needed, not this one. So. I leave this to you to delete this one. But I have a better assignment for you. So again, uh, this is a very simple piece of code. I don't think there should be any problem in that. This is like the really uh, easiest program we have done to understand Python. But you have got in this crash course about uh, definitely some of the debugging skills. And apart from that, you have learned how the variables interact, how the things work in the indentation, global stuff, and most importantly, connecting with the database and crafting a command line application. Not only that, I've got an interesting assignment for you and make sure 100% that you tag me up on Instagram when you do the assignment. So what is the assignment? Let me give you that. It's time for assignment. I hope you have watched the entire crash course and now I'm gonna give you a specific requirement that I have and I want you to build a command line application for that. Since I make a lot of YouTube videos and I come up with all the concepts all the time, here's my problem statement. I want to create an exact same application which we have created just now, but this time for my YouTube videos. I want you to have an application in which I can enter a name of the YouTube videos, a bit of the description of the YouTube videos, and I want to store a couple of tags in that. While storing the tags, I want to have a tag in which, let's just say an array is there and comma separated tabs, tags that I can enter and it can store all of this in my database. While pressing another two or some other key, I want to see all the video ideas that I came up with. I hope you will be able to do that. There's gonna be a little bit challenge that how you're gonna store a list or an array inside the database, but that's something you have to figure out by reading documentation or the website Stack Overflow. So go ahead, make this application, submit it to me on my Instagram, take a photo, tag me up there, or just do anything and reach me out and submit this. I would be really happy to see if you are able to complete this assignment. That's gonna be absolutely fun and really a satisfying thing for me. In case you are watching till the very end of this video, which only a handful of people do, let me know in the comment section what kind of more crash courses would you like to see and catch up on this channel. I would definitely take up your request and creating these kinds of fun crash courses is something that I love. So go ahead, put down in the comment section what kind of more crash courses you want and let's catch up in the next video. And by the way, haven't you have subscribed to my channel yet? I'm pretty sure you have already hit that subscribe button, but in case you haven't done it yet, right now, currently, exactly at this moment is a great time to hit that subscribe button. That's it for this video and let's catch up in the next one.